Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've got a few stocks I want to share with you that are very undervalued. All these stocks I got on my watch list right now, where if I get some new money, I'm going to be buying these stocks right now because they're very undervalued. A lot of these stocks are close to the 52 week low level, which is very weird because the market is at all time highs. And it's very weird because these companies actually have great financial fundamentals. So they're growing their EPS and they're growing their free cash flow. But despite this, they're still falling and probably because of the high interest rate environment but we'll dig into that a little later in the video but yeah hopefully you'll drop a like on the video for me if you would it really helped me out a lot but check this out the first stock we're going over is one i actually own the other stocks on the list i don't own but the first stock on here i absolutely own and this is bill holdings and you can of course see where i bought every single share in my average cost basis if we look right here we're actually down 39 percent on our shares or 301 dollars i'm unlike any other youtuber i'm completely transparent with all my numbers how much i'm up and down on every single stock but check this out if we look today let's actually scroll out to the weekly chart they're basically at where they ipo this company ipo in 2019 and they're literally at their ipo price and the thing is the crazy thing is they're the most profitable they've ever been today they're making the most amount of money they've ever made today and that's why i'm shocked the company is at an all-time low so let me actually share with you the financials so right here is bill's financials and let me show you first off their their net income growth so they just went net income positive for the first time ever. So this is a very good sign. So if we scroll out and look, this company has never once been net income positive. And in the most recent quarter, they are finally net income positive. And we can look at it from a total revenue growth. Look at this. They grew their total revenue 18.52% year over year. Look at the growth of their total revenue. I mean, this is amazing. Literally in 2020, they were making 30, 40 million a quarter. Now they're making 300 million a quarter. The growth does not stop with this company. And check this out. Their balance sheet is at the same safe 55% assets to liabilities ratio. If we look at the quarter before, it was at a 59%, basically 60%. And now it's at a 55%. They just paid off a ton of their debt. If we look at their uh, total liabilities, it went from 5.92 to 5.06. I'll show you that a little later, but here's their free cash flow down here. This is the most important number. Besides, of course, their uh, net income, this is the free cash flow right here. And as we can see, of course, it's well above the 2019 2020 levels. And in the most recent quarter, it was up 100% year over year at $66 million. And I want to show you guys how they're making all this free cash flow. And it's actually because of the high interest rate environment. So, first off, I'll show you their total debt. Like I said, Said in the most recent quarter, they just paid off a ton of their debt. They went from $1.84 billion to $1.15 billion. They retired a ton of their debt. So if we look at their cash, we see in the most recent quarter, their cash fell a ton. Most investors would look at that and be concerned, but it's not concerning because they use their cash to pay off their debt, especially in this high rate environment. That's really good. And even with them still having $952 million of cash, this made them in pure interest $26 million basically, which is up 8% year over year. So because this company has a lot of cash, they're able to put their cash in the money market funds and the treasury bills that yield them 5.5% risk-free. I mean, why wouldn't they? And if we go to their total common shares outstanding, here's the crazy thing either. They have not been diluting you as a shareholder. You actually now own 0.7% more of the company. So remember how they just yeah, so look, they just uh, bought back $665 million of debt. I, I worded that like a stock buyback, but they retired $665 million of debt. And in the same quarter, they issued $20 million of stock. But if we look at the quarter before, they bought back $200 million of their own stock. So that's why year over year, you actually now own 0.7% more of the company. So this company is just a cash, cash cow and their cash is making them 25 million dollars of a quarter in pure interest and this company also is trading at a forward pe ratio of 21.1 which is cheaper than literally anything every other tech play this is cheaper on a forward pe basis and that's really what you want to look at why would you you could look at the trailing 12 months ratio but i want to see what the future has especially for a company that grows 18 percent year over year and that's from a total revenue point of view they're growing their net income like crazy but they're you're comparing it from negative numbers, so I get what you mean by that. But anyway, that is the first stock on the list. So this company is at a basically all-time low. So that's Bill Holdings. The next stock is also basically at an all-time low, which is, or it is, it's actually shocking to me. This is Zoom, and I own 
seven shares of the company in my WeWill portfolio. But now in my opinion, it's a really good time to buy. I mean, would you rather be buying a stock at all time highs? I don't think so, but check this out. If we look at my favorite metrics, the forward PE ratio, it's an 11.43. That is insanely cheap, an 11.43 forward PE ratio. And look at their EPS. This company, Zoom, is finally you know, having real sustainable net income, which is what I love about the company. Back here, it was like, all right, the company deserves to be falling and hitting new all-time lows. But now it's like, well, wait, they're making real net income. If we annualize this net income right here, it's almost $1 billion in the trailing 12 months. And the company has a market cap of $17 billion. So they're trading in trailing 12 months at a 17 PE ratio. But look at this monstrous balance sheet right here. They have $10.3 billion of assets and only $2 billion of liabilities. So they have a 20% assets to liabilities ratio. That is absolutely, I, I don't know any other company that looks like this this is amazing and this is their free cash flow down here they actually grew their free cash flow 40 percent to 588 million dollars if we zoom out that's actually the most amount of free cash flow they've ever made see this is what i'm shocked why is this company at all-time lows i'm literally about to buy this company well actually the market's closed tomorrow but so you have been diluted 3.7 percent year over year with this company that is all right here's their diluted normalized eps so this is what you could do a multiple off. You take the trailing 12 months and then you do a multiple on that. This is that diluted EPS, not the same as their EPS, but this company Zoom, remember they have a $17 billion market cap. They have $1.89 billion of cash on hand. And remember, so they have no debt. Yo, I, I actually got to pick up some of this company. Like this checks all the boxes. So they haven't been diluting you basically at all, but they're growing their net income they're, they're, they have no debt, they have tons of cash, and I bet you the cash is making them a ton of interest, which is right here. Yeah, so in the most recent quarter, they made $17.35 million in interest, which is, which is great. And the company in the most recent quarter actually bought back $150 million of their own stock. And if we zoom out, that's one of the few times they've ever done a stock buyback. And hopefully they're going to be more consistent with their stock buybacks because they can easily afford it. Remember, they made $588 million of free cash flow in the most recent quarter and $216 million of net income. The year before, look how scary this was. They only made $15 million of net income. And, and that's what's so crazy. They're really turning around their story. They're actually becoming sustainably profitable. Like over here, it's like, all right, this is pandemic hype. How long is this going to be sustainable for? But now it's like, okay, this is some real revenue and I could work with this. So that actually explains the forward PE ratio of 11.43. It's just trust. Can they really trust Zoom to keep making these profitable returns? And if you think the answer is yes, then you should pick up some shares of ticker symbol ZM, you know, hashtag not financial advice. But I, I just like showing you the numbers and then you can make your own decision for yourself. All right, guys. So the last stock on the list is actually DocuSign stock. So we are up 20% on our 10 shares or $85, which isn't much, but we actually bought this stock at the October low back here. And ever since then, it's been through some crazy news. They, they were going to get bought out. Then the buyout news didn't go through. So they fell. And then it's just been crazy. But despite all that, they're the most profitable they've ever been today. They're trading at a very fair valuation of a 15 forward PE ratio. A 15. I mean, that's so cheap. In the most recent earnings, they actually rose their guidance. It was very small. They rose it like two percent or something but the guidance was really good so of course this company uh just went net income positive if we zoom out this company for the longest time since 2019 2020 was losing like 50 million a quarter but now in the most recent quarters in the most recent year they've been net income positive for the full year so it's really crucial that they didn't go back to net income negative which was really scaring investors but this is super impressive right here this company is now completely debt free and because of that their assets to liabilities ratio went from 76 percent to 61 percent i can't stress enough how crazy that is this company also has a let me actually see what the the seeking alpha article says so they have a 33 percent free cash flow margin so what that means is their total revenue was $709 million. So remember that, look, their total revenue was $709 million, and they made in free cash flow 
$254 million. So that ratio uh, conversion is roughly 33% in a perfect world. But uh, anyway, let's go to the diluted weighted average shares of the company. So you've literally only been diluted 0.88% year over year, which is literally nothing for a company that has a lot of stock-based comp. They're really getting this under control. They're getting the stock-based comp issuing under control. And guess, look at this. They're not issuing stock. They've only been buying back stock. And in the most recent quarter, they bought back $128 million of stock. If we zoom out, you know, they used to issue stock every single quarter, but now they're like, all right, we're focusing on giving shareholder returns. Let's let's issue or let's retire some stock and let's retire some debt as well. And because of that, you have not been diluted, which is great. So remember, this company has $817 million of cash. And it went down in the two most recent quarters. Look, they had $1.2 billion. It went down because, remember, they just paid off all of their debt. If we look right here, oh, it was right here, sorry. They had $700 million of debt, and they just completely paid it off two quarters ago. So that's what I absolutely love about DocuSign. They're completely debt-free. They have tons of cash. And look, this $800 million of cash is is making them $13 million of interest. So that's what I love about the high interest rate environment. It helps the companies with low debt or no debt and the companies that have a ton of cash. So they're, to an extent, interest rate sensitive resistant. So they're not interest rate sensitive. But the thing is, whenever interest rates go down, they go back to zero. That'll also really help the company because it's the zero rate environments growth company. And the last time we saw zero interest rate environments, DocuSign went to $200 a share, but that was also because of the pandemic. They had a huge story behind them. But yeah, guys, that's DocuSign stock. If you found any value from this video, let me know in the comments. I'm going to respond to every single one in the comments, but also hit the like button.